Just about, uh, uh, I think, eight or ten months back, uh, when uh, Dr. Debroy, I, uh, Vibhan and, Vibhav and Connor uh, were sitting together, and uh, they're they are at the back there, uh, and we said, okay, now let, let's do some photographs and let's write something about culture of India. And that is where this book came into being. But there's something very special uh, in this collaboration. Uh, in fact, Vibhav, uh, I must admit, uh, is my son, uh, and uh, who is going to be presenting about this. And Connor is my foster son, as I say it. Uh, in fact, uh, if you don't know, uh, Connor's uh, dad used to be the general with the US Army. He was the person who headed the Af Afghanistan forces uh, for US. Uh, so he comes from the military family as well. But as I write in my book, uh, I did not visit the Jyotirlingas, but I say, like, in fact, uh, Vibha was born on the Mahashivratri day, so I always say, if I did not have the chance to look at the Jyotirlingas myself, this is the opportunity for me to see them through the eyes of my son. And maybe for the next few lifetimes, or all the lifetimes that I have, when I will actually want to cherish and visit and view what Shiva is all about. Uh, but without further ado, can I request Vibha and Connor to come and talk about uh, this whole process? Thank you for the introduction, Papa. Um, <laughs> so, yes, today we are here to talk about Shiva, Jyotilingams, um, and I think we can start, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Vibhav. Thank you, Ahmed. Greetings, everybody. This is such an awesome and uh, stimulating event. Very, so many distinguished people. So. Um, Vibhav and I are photographers. We met at the Rochester Institute of Technology in New York in 2021. And uh, not only do we share an interest in photography, but we also have a sort of personal, spiritual, and religious inclination, sort of foundational to our art. So, <coughs> oh, so next slide. <laughs> We got to tag team this, yeah. and why we're re why we're reading up back and forth. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So last year, uh, the Institute of Competitiveness approached us to uh, do a book about these twelve Jyotilingams and to make a visual document on the subject of Shiva, because a definitive Jyotilingam book had not been compiled. Uh, so Penguin will be publishing this volume in June, and uh, the principal text is written by. Dr. De Broy, who you just saw, and it's full of a set of photographs, which also can be seen in the slideshow exhibition down the hall. Um, so the subject compelled both Vibhav and myself in a deeply personal way beyond the task of just making pictures, because we wanted to experience and learn what life is like in this massively diverse country like India and to explore our own faith uh, along with that of the greater culture. So in this spirit, we want to present these pictures as a way for you all to experience some of these places, which will allow you for this short moment to consider their significance. Um, as Connor was saying, because of our faith and belief in Shiva and inclination towards the artistic pursuit based in spirit, we wanted to travel to these ancient Jyotirlingam sites to capture this experience of darshan, as you can see in this photograph. Um, so darshan, for those of you who don't know, is a cultural, prominent cultural phenomenon in India uh, that means a sacred visitation. Uh, it comes from a Sanskrit word which means to see. Uh, so it's the central act of visiting a temple. Whenever we go to a temple, uh, whenever any devotee goes to a temple, it's said that they go to get a darshan. It is a reciprocal kind of experience where something is shared between the person who is viewing and what is viewed. And in most of the, and it's used in colloquial, a colloquial sense also, but it's mainly foundational to a religious visitation. It is a kind of a metaphysical connection that is based in sight, but it's by the act of seeing, uh, giving and receiving. As artists that work with cameras, seeing is fundamental to our artistic creation. We use the camera, we take photographs, we see the world, the sense of the eye. On this journey through these Jyotilingams, we were there to sort of feel this connection and sort of see Shiva. When going for a darshan, one sees the deity, as you can see in these photographs, but it's also much more than that in the sense that you're also experiencing and visualizing these rituals that happen in these spaces. As you can see in this photograph, we see this ritual, this very ancient ritual of lighting the lamps at an evening arti at a temple 
um, in you know, Jain, it's in the state of Madhya Pradesh in, in central India. Um, this is a sort of like a performance ritual that is done every day where, people, where the pundits, specifically these pundits who have been living in these temples generationally, they climb these almost 60 feet high stone lanterns um, every day in the evening and, um, and they light the diyas on this sort of stone lantern with the fire. All of this sort of, all of these rituals, all of these experiences um, are happening with the collective. And I think that is the most important part of, of this conversation is that all of these experiences are happening in participation with the collective. The darshan is an individual experience, but it is happening with a lot of people around you. It is happening with the collective, with the group. This act of darshan has been a part of the collective consciousness of India for as long as India has existed. Finally, as artists and observers, we are working with our hands and we are bringing forth images through and from this process. It truly did feel like a divine blessing to visit these temples and we will talk more about them soon. So this is a map of India. I'm sure you all recognize that. And all, all the points are the different Jyotalingams. And each one is a temple in a different region. Now the one in the farthest north, Kedarnath, we actually did not make it to because of the monsoon was so heavy. So if you noticed that something was missing, all right, but. So it's just to talk a little bit about these, specifically about these um, temples that we did visit. This is, this is Kashi. For those of you who don't know, Kashi is also known as Varanasi. Um, Kashi is known as a city of death and it is, um, literally the meaning of Kashi is means shining. So it is in this beautiful dichotomy that this place exists because Death is as celebrated, as celebrated as life in this place. There is one of the most beautiful experiences you can have there. This is another place called Rameshwaram. This is in the south. This is a place where it is believed, according to the Ramayana, when Ram and Sita came back from killing Ravan uh, in Lanka. This is where Sita consecrated the lingam. And it is still believed that it is in this, that it's the same lingam that is worshipped, the Shiva lingam that is worshipped in this temple. When you have a place like this, this is called Bhima Shankar. This is in the Sayadri Hills of Maharashtra. This is on the Western Ghats, um, tropical, uh, tropical region, very much like California. You know, very beautiful place, very beautiful weather, the, the sea, the, the mountains. Um, this is Trimbakeshwar. Again, this is in Maharashtra. This is a place called Grishneshwar. For a lot of you people might know um, the Elora and Ajanta Caves. So Grishneshwar uh, is in the Elora is where the Elora caves are. Um, a very interesting um, experience that we had where we were in this temple, and in this temple you have to go bare-chested, so you can't be wearing clothes in the temple. So when you enter the main sanctum, you have to take your shirts off. Uh, so, and it's also only men can ex enter the temple in that sense. Um, and the main pandit who was the head priest, head pandit, he told us that uh, Shiva sleeps here. So this is the place where Shiva sleeps. And it was very beautiful because this is, we reached this place in the evening and we could see this, uh, see like the evening Aarti and that's when we had the darshan. Another beautiful place called Omkareshwar. Uh, this is on an Om-shaped island in the Narmada, Narmada River. Again, this is in Madhya Pradesh. Um, Narmada River is a very sacred river. It's, you know, uh, it's said that each stone on the river bed is, is like a Shiva Lingam. It's called a Bana Lingam. And the last one to share is this place called Somnath. Now, a very funny thing happened, but we were, we, was, we were trying to get a photograph of this temple, and we were all like maneuvering around the space. And we were, so this, as you see the wall in this photograph, the, the temple complex is behind that wall. And we were just trying to find a building to climb onto to take a photograph of the main temple. And we were just maneuvering and we turned around the corner and we, I saw this camel just standing over there in front of the temple and we, he was like, he was just confronting the camera and we photographed. Uh, it was just one of those beautiful moments. And that's the Somnath temple. There's a very long history of the Somnath temple in, in, with invasions and all of those things. This is on the Arabian Sea. Uh, very beautiful place. You can literally listen to the water as you're inside the temple. You know, when you're, you're doing a darshan, you can hear the waves. So it is a very sensory, auditory experience. It's on the water. Very beautiful, very beautiful place. Yes, in some not. It is amazing. Um, so our goal as documentarians is first 
to show what things really look like. Okay, and so we took all these pictures on the iPhone, which actually allowed us to do that very discreetly and easily in low light and, you know, pack conditions, wide angle. So the point of this is to create an archive of these specific places and subjects at this specific time. Um, and by going to all 12 at Jodelingham, you know, we saw many sides of the country. Um, we also wanted to capture the human angle um, with focus not just on architecture, but on its inhabitants and their way of life in each place. So Hindu culture and religion involves ancient traditions which are very alive in the current day. And uh, through the living tradition of participation, the spiritual practice is a divine and powerful societal force unto itself. So it's clear that this powerful spiritual fervor has been exploited by religious institutions for economic gain, as is the nature of religion. <laughs> which in the modern day, naturally, has created a robust industry for religious tourism. And tourism can only happen at a cost, and the surrender of one's material is part of that process. So we're photographers, and we're working both as participants and observers. Uh, Vibhav took this photograph of the cremation card in Benares, uh, I'm in there, see if you can pick me out. Hmm. And this is where Shiva's first wife uh, burn, burned herself, and the fire there has never gone out. Um, so this is a place, Mark Twain, the American writer, famous satirist, visited, and he wrote about in his book, Fall on the Equator, in 1897. Some aspects of this probably have not changed much since then. And Twain wrote that Benares is older than history. He talks about the rituals extensively, and he has a pretty good bit about how the pundits there have a monopoly on the fire uh, in the ancient city. But, you know, as a satirist, you know, he's also a moralist in disguise. And one thing that he wrote really struck me which is the this line, which is irreverence is disrespect for someone else's God. So if you flip it, you could say that reverence is respect for someone else's God. So you get a statement of humility that is much greater than personal belief, but one of collective faith. Talking about this idea of collective faith, surrender is key to this kind of participation. Surrender to the crowds, surrender to the heat, very, very hot. <laughs> surrender to the will and darshan of Shiva. It is this which can generate profound awareness and unity with the sense of the divine as it is experienced by the people of India. All in all, our work, our contribution is about embracing, participating, observing, recognizing, sharing, and thus presenting a vision of this collective consciousness as it proliferates in India. Thank you. Namaste.